all right good day guys you welcome again to my channel i am joshua the designer in the last few videos i've been trying to show to us how to carry out a simple beam reinforcing uh, reinforcement detailing all right and then um, we've been able to try out a simple or a simply supported beam all right and i showed you how to detail um that in simple steps if you missed that video you can go back there i i have it on the channel it will help you um get better with detailing of beam elements all right so today i want to show to you how to carry out a continuous beam reinforce reinforcement detailing all right so i want to show to you from our standard um, detailing method how to carry out the detailing of a continuous beam element so looking at this general general element drawing we have been dealing with for long it is with this we made our slab detailing i taught that video also you can check the channel and it is this video i showed to you the simply over there that you're seeing on this screen all right so looking at this also we can pick out a continuous beam from this um most of these or all of the beams here are two span beams all right so they are somewhat continuous so we want to pick beam two for example and work with it beam two for example then we'll work with it now the first thing you have to do is to draw the elevation of your beam element all right draw the elevation of the beam element from which you develop your reinforcement detailing so how do you do that the first thing to know is the detail of your beam all right um, which we are using 450 by 225 uh, yes 450 by 225 in section so i want to draw the depth of the beam which is 450 like we said all right and um, it is so obvious that we have um supports at all the points within the axis of the beam so we just like to establish that If you wouldn't mind i would just like to use this to save our time all right so we have this support on this side we have another support at the middle then at the far end all right but this is supposed to be the end of the beam likewise the other end so I'm going to trim off this part and trim off this part. There is an information here. You discover that there are slabs on both sides of the beam. All right. And this ought to reflect in your detail. Because all you're drawing is to give information of what you have. Now we have this. right showing the slab now this is it we have the beam so to show some other details to make our work um, comprehensive is why we need to put the likes of the dimensions and um, some other things like we've done in the other videos all right so we have before we go ahead to the reinforcement detailing just put necessary details that will be useful in communicating what you're doing so we have this all right so as we can see now we have our beam in elevation so you can just name this beam that you've drawn in elevation before you continue to lay your ends on the detailing so this is beam 2 a to c that's how we name the beam beam 2 a to c grid a to grid c so whoever it is that want to reference or make reference to this beam could just go there and find this beam 2 you're talking about a to c 
all right like i showed to you and i usually show to you that there are references there are codes that guides you as you walk through your engineering details you don't just pick um, ideas from the air and work with them there are standard methods standard codes and recommendations that should guide every of your activity as far as engineering is concerned so um i will show to you from the standard requirement all right method of detailing or right, what it should look like at the continuous support of your beam element i show to us what a simply supported um support um simply supported beam should look like and how you should go about it for today i'll show to you how it is supposed to be done for a continuous support of a continuous beam all right so looking at this arrangement this is a typical um analysis of of a continuous beam all right so you see that the moment for example that you can see below this is the moment diagram then the moment diagram you see that we have a continuity of um, moment both at the bottom and the top both at the side the sagging moment and the auger moment we have continuity chain um, reaction to, to say of moment across the beam or along the beam so at this top you see that we are having moment produced as a result of the load imposed all right on the beam so we have continuity of moment at those points and those are the con uh, these are the continuous support points all right that we are dealing with in this video all right so you notice that your your detailing is supposed to answer to the effect of the load imposed on your beam the result of the, the effect of the load or the result of the effect of the load on the beam is supposed to be answered to designed against all right and that is what your detailing would would want to achieve so you see this um top moment that you're seeing here that are, are the supports like you can see here these are my supports these are my supports you see so and then moments produced at this point are what we want to um provide a gauge all right so i'll show to you this is a recommendation for the continuous interior support all right so you can see that on my left i have that for restraint end but this video is not talking about the restraint end this video is focusing on this on the right continuous interior support all right so at this support you can see that we have um reinforcement provided in that order all right so how do you go about this in this case you can see that we are having a 0 0.25 of lx and lx is supposed to be the greater of the adjacent span to the left and to the right all right so whatever is greater of the adjacent span you multiply by 0 0.25 um, from the face of your support, all right, then that would help you provide a support reinforcement. How does this happen on our detailing? All right, so let us let us go there and uh, find out. So we have four meters to the right and four meters to the left. So we know that that's an equal kind of um, arrangement or of dimension. So we just have to pick one of them. But assuming we're having 4.2 meters or 4,200 4, mm on one side and we're having 4,000 mm on another side, it is going to be that we're going to pick 4,200 because it is the larger of the adjacent span. Do not forget what it says. Greater of adjacent span is what LX represents. All right, so we picked 4 meters multiply by is 0 0.25 which is basically one over four of the span all right so that's what it that um, stands to represent one over four of the span so doing this now we have four thousand multiplied by 0 0.25 which gives one meter from the face of your support do not forget from the face of your support so I want to pick one meters. 
that's the minimum you see when you check what i showed to you it, it, that's the minimum you you could go you should not go less than what you have as the recommendation all right so we have one meter and that's what um, we're doing do not forget that we are supposed to maintain a cover of um, 25 for our beam elements i told you in the last video if you do not forget all right so in case you've not um, watched the last video i would I encourage that you do so all right it's going to help you along the line all right so and um, so the other line to the other side we have also one meter so this is what i'm just trying to do to use this as my limit for the reinforcement so to make it bold that that's a reinforcement and not just a line i like to match the properties and have this so it's obvious that this is a reinforcement now this is a support reinforcement or right, that's the support reinforcement for that top moment because there's obviously going to be a top moment as i've shown to you in this um analysis all right you see the the continuous effect of the moment all right at the top so this exactly is going to happen for this also all right so we've done that for this that's for the top which is supposed to be the critical part of the um, compression zone or I'm, i mean for the top zone if you don't mind the critical part of the top zone that that has the proportion of the highest moment proportion of the moment that is um, critical to deal with so on the bottom of this this is what happens yeah this is what happens here we have so now looking at this look at the bottom here the bottom at the support all right there are various ways we lap at the bottom you see here yeah, they said lap to suit lap to suit but i would advise to you if you want to lap to suit that your lapping would be directly on your support do not lap outside the support don't attempt to lap your bottom reinforcement outside the support no that's that's going to be an error so you want your reinforcement to sit on several supports as the case may be so we are having this seat on this and also i want to maintain my cover as usual all right then i have my anchorage the anchorage is what we have at this particular edge all right so on the other side of this on the other side of this i have a lapping at the support because i want it to be at the support also so if you check this what we have here you can have a lapping just as it's done like this but i would advise you like i said earlier to because this detail might be so clumsy for you or for those that you are sending your drawing to on site and they might not get whatever you're saying correctly here which will be disastrous afterwards so better still you lap your reinforcement all right this way you lap it this way this will work so you see at that support there will be a little crank all right a little cranking on on that support on that particular support all right so let me take this up so it will be obvious to the eye all right so now we have this how do you deal with the other part of this top we don't just leave it blank like this all right so maybe when when we might have called out all our enforcement that we have sorted out here this and um, this all right 
and maybe these. All right. So what happens to the other other guys? We don't leave this place empty because um, it has no critical amount proportion of movement. All right. You don't leave it empty. You don't leave this place empty. So what do you do? You have to provide a uh, hunger reinforcement. All right. There and your lapping will be somewhat like what I did earlier. All right. See that now. We have this, we have this, and that that's it on that. See that now? The same thing happens on the other end. Instead of me drawing a fresh, I'll just mirror. All right, the same thing happens there. So since this and this are the same reinforcement, we'll call them O1. I can change this to o2 then this o3 and this o4 all right that's brilliant enough so if i'm gonna i hope you understood everything i've done so far all right so if you have questions and comments you can use the um comment section i'll be there to answer to everything that you need to ask all right to get you better in which this i'm trying to pass all right, to so have a section across this place. All right, we already have a developed section previously, and this is to remind you what we did previously. But in this case, it's going to be a little different. Why? Because we have slabs on both both sides. We have slabs on both sides. All right. So what we're just going to do is this. Okay, so this is it here. We have slab on both sides, just like I showed to you slab on this side and slab on this side. And then the reinforcement to confirm if we stay a good Y1601 at the top, Y1603 at the bottom. So you want to confirm O1 at the top, and this becomes O3. At the bottom in case you want to know how we develop this um, section beam section do well to con um, check our first video how to do beam reinforcement part one then you get to know to know that what about our link our share reinforcement all right this is the what we call share reinforcement, and this information below so let's see how does it affect our work there now so we have this also and this why is it able to work because we are dealing with the same dimension as the previous um, beam that we worked around so if you still want to know how we got this share reinforcement details please use my first video part one of this video is right on my channel and you get all the information as clear as it could be all right so i believe i've been able to show you in simple set how to make this detailing of a continuous interior support of a continuous beam as a case may be so if you have any questions pertaining to this i've shown to you please do not hesitate to check the comment section and put a note down for me i'll be there to answer to you in case you are new to my video please do well to like the video share to your friends and subscribe to this channel see you in the next video Bye.